Hey everyone, and welcome back. If you're an indie game developer or a 2D animator and you're trying to figure out which animation software is better for your projects, you're in the right place. Today we're comparing Unity 2D Animation versus Creature 2D Animation software. We'll cover their features, usability, and which one might be the best fit for your needs. So, let's dive in. Quite. First, let's start with importing sprites. In Unity, you can import your layered sprite files in PSV format, which requires Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, you're f***. But don't worry, I found a workaround. You can import PSD files, which are supported by many digital art software programs like Krita or GIMP. After exporting your file, simply change the file extension from PSD to PSB and drag it into Unity. It works perfectly. Now, in Creature, you can import files in PSD format, but there's a catch. You need to flatten your file first and make sure there are no group layers. This can be a bit of a hassle. On the other hand, Unity handles group layers in your PSD files without any problems. So in this aspect, Unity definitely has the upper hand. So this round goes to Unity. Now let's look at mesh creation. In Unity, it automatically generates meshes for different body parts, and you can easily modify these meshes. You can make them more dense or even create custom meshes. It's simple, easy, and intuitive to create meshes in Unity. Now in Creature, when you import your PSD files, it automatically creates meshes for you. As you can see, these meshes are very dense, but you can make them less dense during export. If you don't want the default mesh created by Creature, you can create your own custom meshes. I don't find any problems with that. So this round goes to both softwares. Next up is rigging and weight painting. Both Unity and Creature allow us to easily create bones, but they handle the process differently. In Unity, you can create bones by going to the Create Bones menu, then left-clicking and dragging to create bones. To change the parent, right-click, select the bone you want to make the parent, and left-click and drag again. After creating bones, Unity offers two options for weight painting, manual and automatic. At first, I found the automatic weight painting awesome in Unity, but I encountered an issue. For example, one of the hair bones affected the bottom part of the beard, even though they are far apart. This can result in weird behavior with complex rigs, but you can manually correct it using manual weight painting. Now in Creature, you create bones by left-clicking and dragging, but to change the parent, you have to press Alt-S, select the bone you want to make the parent, and press Alt-C to continue creating bones. This might seem complex compared to Unity, but trust me, it's not. Now for weight painting, Creature offers three modes, Smart, Auto, and Manual. I find Creature's Smart weight painting better than Unity because I didn't encounter any problems with Creature's Smart mode, and you can also use Auto and Manual approaches to correct your weights. So, while both have their strengths, Creature wins this round because of its superior automatic weight painting. Now let's talk about adding IK or inverse kinematics. If you're not familiar with inverse kinematics, Rick will explain it to you. Take it away, Rick. To understand IK, we first need to consider forward kinematics. In FK, we move each bone separately. For instance, to move the arm, we adjust the shoulder bone first, followed by the forearm, and so forth. On the other hand, in IK, we move the root bone, and the other bones adjust accordingly to the movement of the root bone. For instance, in a scenario where a player is picking up an item, IK can be employed. IK is utilized in various situations such as accurate foot placement of characters, picking up items, and more. Now in both Unity and Creature, you can add IK or inverse kinematics to any number of bones. However, Creature has the upper hand here. In Creature, you simply select the bones where you want to add inverse kinematics, add the IK motor, and you're done. You can immediately start moving bones using IK. Now in Unity, the process is more involved. You need to add several components, like the IK solver and effector, to enable IK for the bones. While you can achieve IK without any problems in Unity, the process is lengthy and time-consuming. So, because Creature's process is more straightforward and efficient, this round goes to Creature. Now let's look at animation, an area where Creature truly shines. First, let's examine the animation process in Unity. 
In Unity, you move the bones on the timeline and the bones follow that action. For example, to create an idle animation, I move and rotate the bones accordingly. But what about adding the secondary motion? You might ask, what is secondary motion? Well, imagine your main character is running. That's your primary action. To make the animation look more realistic and lively, you add extra movements. These could be the character's hair bouncing, clothes fluttering, or even small things like a bag jiggling as they move. These additional movements are called secondary animation. In Unity, you have to add secondary motion manually, which is the most traditional approach. However, Creature handles animation differently. You don't have to manually add keyframes in the timeline to create animations, although you can if you prefer. Creature's motor system is so powerful that it automates much of this process. For instance, to create an idle animation, I just installed a bouncing motor to the bones, and that's it. Now, to add secondary motion, you can use motors as well. For example, I use the bend physics motor for hair to add secondary motion. The hair might look quite stretchy because of the weight, which I manually painted to test the manual weight painting in Creature. Additionally, in Creature, you can manipulate meshes during runtime, which is not available in Unity. Just look at this zombie animation. You won't believe how easy it is to create something like this in Creature, and this is just a small part of the animation process. Creature offers much more when it comes to animation, such as 3D motion capture to 2D or lip sync and many more features. So this round completely goes to Creature software. Now let's look at export options. Creature supports most game engines, including Unity and Unreal, as you can see on the screen. However, Unity animations are limited to Unity itself. This point could be controversial because Unity is primarily a game engine with a wide range of functionalities beyond animation, and there's no strong reason for Unity to support exports to other platforms. So let's call this round a draw for export options. When it comes to pricing, Creature offers three licenses. The standard for $50, which includes basic features, the Pro license for $99, and the Enterprise for $800. Unity is free unless your revenue exceeds a certain threshold. So this round goes to Unity. So this concludes the detailed comparison between these two software options. Let me know in the comments which software you'd like us to compare next, like Dragon Bones or Spine, as there are many options on the market. Hope you liked this video. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.